So I had Michael Tracy on just last week, and he said this about the Bernie Sanders campaign. And if you don't think, if Bernie himself or the people around him don't think that, you know, last week it was sexism. This week, who knows what it'll be. Right. But on some. Okay, every week it's something new. So the week before it was sexism with Elizabeth Warren. This was he's, this week. Who knows what it's going to be? Well, we know what it's going to be this week. So that's what we were saying. Don't know what's what it's going to be, but it's something every week. It's going to be something new. Another smear against Bernie Sanders, right? So, uh, and the important thing is that Bernie doesn't capitulate like Jeremy Corbyn did in the UK. You know that he did that, right? He capitulated on anti-Semitism and he capitulated on Brexit. And he shouldn't have on either of those things, and that's why he may, he looked weak, and that's why he got they lost their ass. Mm -hmm. well, and they, he capitulated they also, to labor. What's that? He capitulated to labor. Yes, yeah, he capitulated to the neo the neoliberals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and that lo they they lost voters that they would never thought they were going to lose because they went against the will of the vote. You can't go against the will of the vote anyway. So here's what. Um, Here's what the Democrats used to say. Here's Nara Tandon. She's the president for the Center of American Progress, which is the mo most well-moneyed uh, Democratic think tank in, in Washington. It was uh, used to be uh, run by uh, Hillary Clinton's campaign manager, John Podesta. And here's what she used to say about attracting disaffected Republican voters. This is what she used to say. And what should the Democrats be being doing, be doing, I guess, be doing to attract disaffected Republicans who are fleeing the GOP? Are we catching them in the net? <laughs> you know, I my view of this is that you're right, that the country is facing an existential threat right now, and we have to make alliances wherever. And so I think we should welcome them. I think we have to recognize yes. that accountability is... And we have to welcome them. That's, that's what they used to say. Disaffected GOP voters, we have to welcome them. In fact, Chuck Schumer, their whole strategy in 2016 was not to get disaffected Democratic voters off the couch to vote. It was to get disaffected Republican voters. You think I'm lying? They were telling him you're going to lose Democratic blue collar voters in Pennsylvania, Michigan and Wisconsin and Ohio. Is that smart to campaign this way? To go after Republicans in the suburb? Is that smart? And there's what the Democratic leader in the Senate said. For every blue-collar Democrat we will lose in Western PA, we will pick up two, three uh, moderate Republicans in the suburbs of Philadelphia. And you can repeat that in Ohio and Illinois and Wisconsin. So that, that's what they used to say. We're trying to get disaffected Republicans to vote for us. We're supposed to have an open up, right? Well, in fairness to Chuck Schumer, though, you know what they also say? One out of four ain't bad. <laughs> one out of four of those. <laughs> so this happened. So Bernie, so this happened and Bernie tweeted this out. This is a tweet from Bernie. Who are you going to vote for in the primary? I think, I think I'll probably vote for Bernie. Him as a human being, when I was hanging out with him, and yeah. I, I believe in him. I like him. I like him a lot. What Bernie stands for is a guy who, well, look, you could, you could dig up dirt on every single human being that's ever existed if you catch them in their worst moment, and you magnify those moments, and you cut out everything else, and you only display, display those worst moments. That said, you can't find very many with Bernie. He's been insanely consistent his entire life. He's basically been saying the same thing, been for the same thing his whole life. And that in and of itself is a very powerful structure to operate from. So that happened. Exactly what Nair Tandon said the Democrats should be doing. Exactly what Democratic leader Chuck Schumer said the Democrats should be doing. No, if you're if you're gonna get it, if you're gonna get a disaffected GOP voter, it's got to be for Warren, Buttigieg, Biden. It can't be for Bernie, because that hurts them. Do you understand how they'd rather have Trump than have Bernie Sanders as president? Neera Tanden, Hillary Clinton, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer. They'd all rather because they're all owned by their donors, and their donors fear. Bernie Sanders way more than they fear Donald Trump. In fact, Donald Trump fears Bernie Sanders too, as a re recent recording was revealed. 
And why do they all... Because he's going to upturn their apple cart. He's going to get the corporate money out of the politics game, and that's what scares them the most. So this tweet goes up, that video of Joe Rogan saying how consistent he's been and how he's going to vote for him. And the neoliberal Democrats can't have it. And they... Uh, launched series after a bad faith attack after bad faith. This is exactly what they say that the the Democrats should be doing. It's exactly what they say they should be doing. And then watch the attack. So here's one. Uh, It's been seven hours. Why is this tweet still up? Every moment it's up, our LGBTQ friends feel unsafe. I set a timer to comment on this post every hour until it's removed. Wait, you should you should set a timer to get your head out of your ass every 59 minutes right before the timer for you to go tweet this again comes up. <laughs> I, I think we're all kind of just like, I. that's one way you could spend a day. That's one uh, way. I, I, I can think of a lot of better ways to spend a day, like doing anything else. Doing anything else. I mean... <laughs> Right? Like sometimes you just, how do you get in the mind of, I'm going to set a timer and I'm going to tweet and then the world will be a better place? Like, what? I, I, I set I mean, a timer just to see when this tweet is removed. Yeah. <laughs> so get this. So he tweets this out in 2020, 2012, and it's positive. Look what he says. He says, Call me romantic, but I love when gay guys on a date are comfortable enough to kiss in public. Holy shit. That was 2012. That was before Hillary Clinton was for gay marriage. The guy's further left than the standard bearer. Hashtag queen, queen, uh, warmonger queen. (laughs) She that so he tweets that out. Say he likes it when gay guys kiss in public. She says, "In the Democratic Party, we do not fetishize LGBTQ (laughs) folks." No. No way. No. No way. No. Come on. This They're is upset. a joke. Do you understand how this is the op this has the opposite effect of what you want to have done? This actually is gonna if you think Joe Rogan's tweet made people feel unsafe, this is going to make this isn't going to help. This is going to make it worse. Because now the next time you complain about somebody who might actually be being homophobic. No one's going to listen to you because there's a story they tell four-year-olds. It's called The Boy Who Cried Wolf. And that's what this is. Can you believe this, Ron? That person must set a timer to cry wolf every 20 minutes, I guess. I I mean, that's like, how do you get that out of that tweet? How do you get that? I mean, it's a societal statement, too. Like, he's saying, like, I'm glad that they're comfortable doing that. I mean, really, you can't sit here and think Ashley Wilcockus for Warren is acting in good faith. Well, that's what I'm saying. She is a divider. you got to be kidding me, Ashley. That's who you are. Nasty woman, 1012. You're a bad faith actor. You don't really give a shit about the LGBT community in this situation. You're using them as a as a cudgel to beat your political opponents with, which is fucking disgusting. Which makes you a disgusting person. Which make you're going to you're going to use this legitimate issue and on people's vulnerability, LGBTQ people's vulnerability to try to score political points. You're disgusting. You're worse than anything you could ever accuse Joe Rogan of doing. And now you're actually hurting that cause because the next time somebody in the LGBTQ community uh, complains to the Joe Rogan community, they're going to remember this. They're going to say those people are all full of shit. Completely full of shit. Well, not to mention, I'm pretty sure that throughout his entire career, Bernie Sanders has fought for yes. LGBTQ of course he issues. Has. Well, While Liz Warren was a Republican, that's right. Ah! So voted for Reagan, mm-hmm. voted for Nixon, voted for Dole, voted for Bush. One. Uh, here's the Hillary Clinton team. Alfonso David, president of the Human Rights or oh, the Human Rights Campaign. Now, let's remember the human rights campaign, another corporate-funded bullshit thing, okay? Okay. 
Uh, Bernie Sanders has run a campaign unabashedly supportive of the rights of LGBTQ people. Rogan, however, has attacked transgender people, gay men, women, people of color, countless smart. It's like, what, what the fuck is wrong with these people? Joe Rogan is the exact opposite of that. <laughs> Chuck, I, I was on with Joe Rogan. He was the opposite of that. Have, have, uh, do you know what they're talking about? No, I, I don't know what they're referring to. I, I told Joe, Joe, Joe Rogan has no problem with gay people whatsoever. Joe Rogan has, discu- has discussed an issue about uh, uh, women, trans women, competing in athletics against other cis women. Am I using that term correctly? Yes. That's a legitimate debate to have. That, that doesn't make you... And uh, I, I never weighed in on that because I say, well, it's up to the women to have that debate. It's not up for me to have that debate. But Joe Rogan is a sports commentator professionally. He has to comment on it. So he comments on it because there was a, there was a trans woman boxer, a fighter in UFC. He had to comment on it. Uh, so are they ultimately saying, Jimmy, that Joe is, Rogan stop endorsing endorsing Bernie Sanders because you're a bad person? You're, yeah, we we don't want bad people's votes. All of a sudden, I, I, what the what the fuck was this? What was this all about? What was this? For every blue collar Democrat we will lose in Western PA, we will pick up two, three uh, moderate Republicans in the suburbs of Philadelphia, and you can repeat that in. Ohio and Illinois and Wisconsin. That's your strategy. Now Bernie actually can pull it up. They do the same thing to Tulsi. Because Tulsi actually appeals to people because people are sick of the establishment from on both sides of the aisle and independents. And of course, the biggest voting block of people is the people who don't vote. That's 100 million people. So if I was running for president, those would be the people I would be targeting. The people who uh, think the, who know the game is rigged and no matter who they vote for, it's a choice between being punched with the right hand or being punched with the left hand. Those are the people that we should be going after. Anyway, here it is. He's getting them. And of course, you couldn't couldn't be more disingenuous. Couldn't be couldn't be more disingenuous bullshit. Uh, he's a colossal amount of my followers got more pissed off about a Joe Rogan endorsement than a Henry Kissinger endorsement. And if that doesn't show you how uneducated the headline skimming slacktivists of Twitter are, I don't know what to tell you. I would say that they're not headline skimming slacktivists. I mean, all of them. That's a great, that's a great uh, turn of phrase, by the way. I don't think they're all that. I think uh, most of them are bad faith actors. Uh, just like it's like move on. Also, corporate funded bullshit organization that was originally invented to help Bill Clinton get over his uh, sexual harassment of his intern. <laughs> right. That's what move on means. Censor the president and move on with the business of the country. That's what move on means. Censor the president. He did something wrong. He lied under oath on video. And his wife slut shamed the woman he had a sex with. So we censor him, and then we move on. That's how they got their name. (laughs) And now move on is putting out bullshit like this. It's one thing for Joe Rogan to endorse a candidate. It's another for Bernie Sanders' campaign to produce a video bolstering the endorsement of someone known for promoting transphobia, homophobia, Islamophobia, racism. Just making shit up. Just making it up. You know, you, you, you know who p- promotes Islamophobia? How about Barack Obama when he bombed seven different Muslim countries? <laughs> Does that count? Aren't they worried about the New York Times endorsement right. of Klobuchar and Warren? What else no. have they endorsed? Yeah. Yeah. Right? No kidding. No kidding. Yeah, let, let's call on Elizabeth Warren to denounce the endorsement the, the, of the New York Times. They got the Iraq war wrong. Right, and, and the Libya the war ro- wrong, and, yeah. and the Syria gas attacks wrong, and the Venezuela thing wrong, and they're getting... Every, what else they, can, can they get wrong? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that causes a lot of damage. So she should denounce that endorsement. By right. by the way, in the meantime, we all know every single presidential candidate is begging to go on Joe Rogan. Right. So move on tweets this out. And Ryan Grimm says mm-hmm. it's one thing to to get Joe <laughs> Rogan's endorsement without bending 
on your values one inch, but it's another to try to use that endorsement to win the support of his millions of followers. <laughs> Mulan should apologize for this tweet. <laughs> so then underneath, you know, you know you're on the right side if you're on the other side of Dara Tannen. Mm-hmm. Whatever the issue is. If you want her endorsement, right. run. Run. You're an awful so person. So if she, she endorses you, you're an awful person. So, uh, uh, although although she did like Tulsi when Tulsi was still taking corporate money, but as soon as she stopped taking corporate money, near attendant, that was it. She hated her. So, yeah, previous corporate taking money, she loved her. Uh, but here is uh, near attendant saying, seriously, Rogan compared black neighborhoods to Planet of the Apes. How are you as a journalist telling Move On what to do? Is she just making shit up now completely? That can't be a thing that happened. I'd imagine she's making shit so up now, So now, so you know how the boy cried wolf thing works? Now I'm not even going to bother to look that up. <laughs> really? See, that's how the boy who cried wolf works. Uh, so what I said, I said, hey, seriously, you advocated for stealing oil from Libya to fund more illegal wars. How are you still allowed in polite society? Ha! Bravo. And so do you see the people coming at It's all bad faith actors, all liars, bad faith actors who want to screw you. They want you to have not have Medicare for all. They want you not to have free college. They want you to not have your college debt uh, uh, relieved. They want they want to keep us in wars. They want to keep funding the military industrial complex. They want to keep deregulating Wall Street. They want to keep being in bed with the fossil fuel industry. They want to keep putting fracking pipes underneath this country. That's who the people are who are screaming about Joe Rogan. That's who these people are. And why are they screaming so loud and so crazily right now? That's why. That's why. Because Bernie Sanders, it looks like he's going to win. That's why. So now they're all for trying to figure out ways that they're trying to Jeremy Corbyn him right now. And a couple of times they got him to roll over on the Jake Uger thing and uh, apologizing for Zephyr I, 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 I hope that it's behind them now. I think it is. Because look at this. Look at that. So top choice for Democratic nominee. That's the uh, ja- from January 2023. That's the New York Times Siena College poll. Bernie Sanders, he's out in front by eight percentage points. Seven? I'm not a math surgeon. Is that seven? <laughs> in between five and eight. <laughs> <laughs> so and the, what's the, uh, the plus or minus? The error is 4.8. So there you go. That's what's making them afraid. That's what's making them afraid. And here's the news report to go along with it. Watch this. Hey, by the way, Tulsi's polling very well. I don't know why she's not on I this. saw. I thought I saw. Mm, no. As well. It was clear last night here in Sioux City as Bernie Sanders finished his final campaign stop of the weekend that he believes the Democratic establishment is getting nervous about him. He was talking about it again and again, almost relishing on that anxiety that is coursing through the Democratic Party establishment. Now, some of his... Ro- <laughs> you know, look at, he's almost relishing the anxiety that's coursing through the Democratic establishment, meaning CNN. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting off. He's getting his rocks off on this shit. That's what, that's what that guy's saying. Oh, yeah, totally. That's and I love, how, I love how that's how they frame it, yeah. where they're just like, he's, yeah, Bernie's Sanders is enjoying the Democratic establishment getting nervous instead of being like, hey, why is the Democratic establishment nervous Nervous. that they might win? It's amazing framing. That was a good catch, Ron. You're exactly right. That's amazing framing. Yeah, he's relishing in the fact that he's making these good people feel uncomfortable. (laughs) How dare he? (laughs) These good people who just want to keep you from getting health (laughs) care. Because because they get more money that way if you don't have it. These are good people, hey. and and you should be worried about them. Ed, well, and Bernie's making them feel uncomfortable. <laughs> that's just that's just how he is. He's rude. It's rude, Bernie, and he, he's going to go ahead and he's going to get more per, more voters than Joe Biden. And how do you think that's going to make Joe Biden feel? My skin is crawling. Oh, my pearls are clutched. And Bernie is relishing, <laughs> relishing, <laughs> like like at a Chicago hot dog. so that's why this is all happening that's why they all of a sudden decided to make joe rogan a bad guy they all reached out to joe rogan show they all wanted to come on joe rogan show (laughs) right 
He has on Joe Rogan has everybody on that show from every. He has Abby Martin on that show. He has Kyle Kalinsky on that show. He has me on that show. He has uh, uh, Ben Shapiro on that show and a host of other uh, people who you would vehemently disagree, disagree with. Uh, but again, uh, you saw what the Democrat strategy is. The Democrat strategy is to appeal to those people on the right. And then as soon as someone comes along who could actually do it, they try to make it into a bad thing. And that's how propaganda works. And this is why they're doing it. Oh, there's more to this. Watch this. We're very blunt hitting back. Amy Klobuchar says, look, this is about electability. I do not come from a blue state like Vermont. Pete Buttigieg sent a note to his supporters saying Bernie is rising here in Iowa. I need your help. So it is. You know why he had to send a note, Pete Buttigieg? Because he couldn't send an email because all of his supporters are about over 70 years old. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to send them all handwritten notes. It takes a lot longer. All about electability. Senator Sanders answered all of that question with this. He says excitement is the key to electability. He can bring in new voters, younger voters, a new coalition that will help Democrats beat President Trump in November. So, John and Allison, no question here in the final week of campaigning, as Senator Sanders is back in Washington with those other senators who are running for president, it is up for grabs in this state. Too close to call, but one thing is clear. Bernie Sanders on the rise. His rivals are nervous. That's why this is all happening. That's why this is that they're scrambling. Why did Elizabeth Warren decide to call Bernie a sexist? Why did she all of a sudden decide to stick the knife in the back of her friend? Because Bernie's surging. That's why. And he's going to win. And they know that. He wins Ohio. He wins Iowa and New Hampshire, which it looks like. It's just, come on. And then uh, California's in Super Tuesday now. They did that to screw Bernie. Turns out it's going to help him. Well, and I think this proves once and for all that the Democrats' first priority is totally not winning. And I know, like, we know that on this show. We've talked about that on this show for years. But, you know, just to really drive the point home, if you need any more evidence, what else do you need? They say we want to appeal to people on the right. Someone can actually do it. They shame him for it. And if that was actually their plan, if they really wanted to win and they think appealing to people on the right is going to accomplish that— why is their chosen one, Elizabeth Warren, right. someone who refuses to go on Fox News? Wow. Well put, Ron. And her decision to not go on Fox News was complete bullshit grandstanding. It totally was. Absolutely. You're, to complete, you're try, you, you mean those voters don't deserve to hear what policies you have that right? you're running on? They don't deserve only it? Half the these country other does? Americans don't deserve it? You're only asking half the country to vote for you? You don't want to be everybody's president? So you're a uniter. Right. Come on. You, that right. you're ignoring a whole group of people. But she, That's like, would we tolerate if she says, I'm not going to go on Univision? Ha! <laughs> but, 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 uh, what's funny is, uh, she will go on MSNBC, which fired a, a host for merely covering a progressive candidate. They fired Ed Schultz for covering Bernie Sanders. She will go on MSNBC, no problem. They fired Phil Donahue for telling the truth about the Iraq war. Fired him. That That's okay. All that's okay with her. Roger. It's just somehow, go ahead. Roger Ailes mentored, mentored Rachel, Rachel Maddow. Maddow mm-hmm. And she will go on Rachel Maddow's right. show. Rachel calls a- Roger Ailes a friend. That's right. Hey, come see a live Jimmy Dore show. We're going to be in Tempe, Arizona, Sacramento, San Jose, Miami. Go to JimmyDoreComedy.com for a link for all tickets to all of our live shows. And go to JimmyDoreComedy.com slash join to become a premium member. We give you hours of bonus material every week. Thanks for your support.